Mic check, one, two. I'm live? I'm live, live? Okay, I'm live, live. I'm live, live. Um, I, you know what? I am trying to send someone our YouTube channel right now. Let me live, live. Um, anyways, right there. All right, so this is a this is a redo. We had some technical difficulties on the last live. Um, it just cut off mid conversation. I think we were almost at hundred. We were talking. Yeah, we had a hundred people stacking in last time. We were like up to five hundred. So we didn't market this one. So there may be less people in the in the comment section. But if you are here with us live, please comment. Uh, we're gonna go over some of the stuff that we intended to go over and some of the questions that were in the last live in the comment section. We saved them. So I'm gonna get queued up for that. Um, what I am literally trying trying to do right now is uh send someone who wants to send us a real estate referral our uh channel so yeah you can tell this person we'd love to help um yeah yeah um what are some of the so a couple of things housekeeping we have our facebook group in the description if we don't already have it put in there we will put it in there we're trying to get more people to go over to Facebook, join our Facebook group, and uh, participate in the conversation in there. So some people are nine months out; uh, they're going to be moving. They want to, you know, have conversation. You know, have me, have have Mahi, have us comment on things over time at that distance. Um, also, our new website. So I, we showed it on the last slide, but let me just show it again. Can you go to my screen? We good? So our old website, let's just say it wasn't as nice. This website, <laughs> never mind my crazy face. This website, which is launching, I'm going to say probably next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. I had a meeting yesterday about the launch, and we are getting it buttoned up. So you have like kind of a Hawaiiana pattern. Let us know in the comments what you think about the new logo. So we have the logo with the Hawaiian Islands here. Um, it features our YouTube channel. It's so on brand, like way more on brand. Um, this is a video where Mahi and I just kind of talk about our backgrounds, you know, like actually cry in that video. I talk about when my mom died. Uh, just a way nicer video. And this is an interactive map where you're going to be able to click on these neighborhoods and then like a two minute or so video about that neighborhood is going to pop up. So if you want to move to Kaneohe, you want to move to Eva Beach, you click on it. There's me and Mahi, uh, Mahi and I talking about it saying this Eva Beach is like this. Kaneohe is like this. So. Uh, our website provider actually hadn't ever done this. We pushed them to do this, and then, um, now they're going to be doing it. Uh, and you can, of course, contact us here. At the very bottom, you can also book a call. While we're here, I'm going to go to our current website. So the, for the people that are live are going to watch this in the next five days before we launch our, our uh, site, you can, uh, you can go here and just hit contact us. Hit contact us, or I believe also at the bottom, you can just type in your name and contact us. So contact us, book a call, book a consult. Uh, let us know about your Hawaii real estate needs. What questions did we have from the last uh, from the last live? Are we still on my computer screen? No. Can we go back to it real quick? All right. So this is our Facebook group. I just I just kind of stole our YouTube thing, I'm going to be honest. I stole our YouTube banner. We'll make a custom one later. But uh, we're going to start adding resources in here as well. Uh, everything we talk about will always be on the YouTube channel. But uh, relocation guides, you know, PDFs on this, that, the other. And an ability to connect with our past clients and future clients who are like, oh, yeah, I'm moving too. Like, I'm thinking about Eva Beach, but you already talked to Derek and Mahe? Like, what? What do you think about Eva? Because I could go Milan here. You know, the you know, Kailua. Like Kaneohe and Kailua are close, but they're different. You know, these are uh it'll be invaluable. The Facebook group will be invaluable. So all right, we can exit that and go put it on me. Okay. Um are you are you going are you seeing any changes to current the market or oh, to the current market i think they meant to say which shifts in remote work on the mainland etc more people coming in and leaving 
All right, Alice, thank you for your question. I'm going to address that specifically, and I'm also going to address that on a macro scale. So uh, specifically, that had affected the market. I think a lot of the post-COVID shuffle of people like, I could live in Austin and then, you know, work for my tech company in Silicon Valley or Hawaii. A lot of that post-COVID shuffle energy is sort of, it's dwindling. I think it did affect every housing market, you know, every major metro area in the U.S. post-COVID. Uh, people are kind of settling. I guess the dust and the leaves, you know, are settling. Uh, also, though, these individual things. So I would relate that to the Airbnb, short-term rentals. People think like, oh, so, you know, people who are anti-short-term rental would be like, hey, uh, the short-term rentals are affecting the housing market and driving prices up for locals. And while I, I understand and resonate with that sentiment, it's not entirely true. Short-term rentals, you know, I've seen, I've seen stats to say they represent less than 1% of the market, less than 05 Like these individual things like short-term rentals, people relocating here for tech work, working remotely, et cetera, they don't affect the market in the way that we would think they do. So... I just wanted to put that out there too, especially for my local people watching. And, you know, obviously there's uh, some nerves that get struck and some pain there. These, these individual things don't shift the entire market. Um, yeah, yeah, just cue me up. Some audience, okay. Where do University of Hawaii faculty typically live or rent temporarily? Temporarily? Well, temporarily, so where do... Where do UH Hawaii faculty and students typically live temporarily? Uh, temporarily by Waikiki. Because the way the zoning is, the way the zoning on the island is, and I could, here, let's go to my computer again, please. So where do people working, attending UH typically live if it needs to be temporary? All right, this usually, Google Maps usually takes just a, a second. I think I made my mic too high even for me. All right. There's my Zoom feature. There we go. All right. So let's look at the zoning. So Bill 41 was like, I don't know what the, the legal term would be, like re-ratified. It was like passed and then... Uh, and then everyone sued the city, like the civilians got together and sued the city. And then it was put at a, like it was stood down for a bit and then, um, it was repassed. So the don't make investment decisions or financial decisions based off of this, but for the most part, the short term rental area and Waikiki, um, where's Kapuhu here. So like, it's like. Kuhio Avenue, there's a few buildings that go in between Alawai and Kuhio, but it's like it's like this rectangle. These are the areas zoned full resort, not residential resort, which is a 30 day minimum term, but full resort zoning and anywhere else. So UH Manoa is here. So the. Oh, I didn't mean to click that. <laughs> UH Manoa is there. So a lot of people say like, oh, Makiki. Like in these areas, people stay in Makiki or, or just in town, Makali, et cetera, Kaimuki, Diamond Head area. But what is temporary, right? So if it's six months, yeah, sure. Makiki, really anywhere on the island that fits with your finances and your commute and your lifestyle. If it needs to be less than 30 days, it's going to be Waikiki. So a little bit of Bill 41, short-term investment answer in there. But uh, yeah, people UH, if it's like less, if it's weeks, days and weeks, it's probably going to be in Waikiki. What else we got? Comments here? Yeah. Um, bro, hello, everyone. So new page is much nicer. I, thank you. We needed it. Uh, we should have done it a long time ago. Um, we're too busy helping people buy and sell real estate. Where do you, before I'm moving to Big Island next month, any tips? Um, you know, call us up and we can connect you with our Big Island partners, depending on Hilo, Kona, whatever. If you're buying, uh, that'd be the first selfish tip. Uh, the other thing I would say is just, do, you know what? We just went to Kauai. He and I just went to Kauai, so Outer Island, uh, two days ago. And it's kind of sobering. It's kind of, 
it, it, it puts things back into perspective. People moving at a slower pace. Uh, the, you know, aloha is felt, etc. So my tip would just be don't move to, especially an outer island, really don't move anywhere wanting to change it. Like move there because you want it to change you. You want to participate. Now to the effect that you can change like people drinking diet sodas and, or sorry, sodas and smoking cigarettes and obvious bad things. Like we want to change that in every society. Oh. But, uh, you know, don't move to Big Island because you want to make it New York or something like that. That would be my, my real advice. Uh, other advice, maybe get a four-wheel drive because Big Island, Kauai, there's like places where you can only, you know, only access off-road. Uh, don't overtake people. So overtake, you know, so pass people on the highway. It can be seen as rude if you're just like, you overtake someone. You're just like, my time's more important than yours. I'll just zoom past you. Or if you must, then just throw the shakas, you know, like, Observe aloha and integrate with aloha is my, my advice. What's the average property tax percentage in Oahu and are bonds common? I'm not sure if that's a different, like the bond thing. I'm not sure if that would be for a different state. Um, I'm not sure how bonds related to property taxes. Jody's going to come on, so she might. But uh, yeah, we have a special guest coming. She's going to come in soon as she's done like, Riding alone or something back there. Um, and Mahi's here. Mahi's in the other room as well. We're doing a signing with another client. So Mahi and maybe our client might pop in too. We'll see. Anything can happen on this one. Um, average property tax percentage. Why am I brain farting? I just, you know what? I can go on my Instagram. I just did a, uh, like, so a local politician wants to come on uh, and be featured on our, on our show and potentially the podcast version of our show because I, I gave some property tax advice on her thing. And I ha I ha I've, I've at one point had this all memorized. Okay, here, here's my comment. Um, yeah, so 35 cents per thousand. So 35 cents per thousand. Uh, Hawaii actually has the lowest property tax of any state in the country for owner occupants. Uh, but our prices are higher. So you, Alabama, who's in the, the bottom five of cost for, prop, for owner occupants, your total amount in Alabama is going to be less because the house is probably going to be less, right? But per thousand, Hawaii has the lowest property tax. Um, so 35 cents per thousand. There's a homeowner's exemption form that if you do a deal with us and our primary lender, they just file that for you. So well, speaking of our lender, Jody. Um, okay, well, our other lender, her sister is Hi. texting me. Oh. Yeah, three dollars and fifty cents per thousand. Yes. Oh, I was saying so it wrong. I'm saying it wrong. I said point three five. Yeah, so three dollars and fifty cents per thousand. And the home exemption form that's with the home exemption is thirty three dollars and fifty cents. Correct. So it's four dollars and fifty cents if you don't file the form. Correct. And that's for that's up to a million. Yes. Right. Right. Correct. So $3.50 with the home exemption form filed up to your first million of assessed value. Right. So, for example, if your home were assessed at $1.1 million, you pay $3.50 per thousand and then $4.50 for that per thousand for that next. So it would be an additional $450 bucks instead of an additional $350 bucks for that next $100,000. Um, I've had that committed to memory. I just I don't, you don't use it. You use it all the time, yeah. right? We hardly yeah, we use, use it. it all the time. Uh, I'm moving to Guam. No worries. No, hey, half a day. Uh, if anyone's from Guam, Guam closings take about 100 days. For real? You've yeah. done you do loans in Guam? I've known people that have. Oh, okay. I have an affinity for Guam because, uh, anyways, I get. I, There's two appraisers. There's only two appraisers? Uh, it's a very small number. Wow. So it's like an appra to, to get an appraisal, you got to. <laughs> is it a little tall? I can go down a little bit. Got to get cl okay. closer to the mic. Is that is that better? Uh, I have an affinity for Guam. I have a, I have a lot of people from Guam uh, that are my really close friends. And so anyway, so that's a whole nother video. Uh, you kind of look like you could be from Guam. Well, every Hawaii, a lot of Hawaii <laughs> people could be from Guam, but... You ever had tomorrow barbecue? Yes. Red rice. Yes. Their version of potato salad, their barbecue, Kelly Glenn. You tomorrow? Oh. Hey. 
Easy. Um, thanks for answering my question. Yeah, for sure, Jay. Hoping to move to Wallace someday from, from the East Bay. Tips on how to reach this goal for someone in their 20s. Yes, Joseph. I know I'm actually partnering with some agents soon in the Bay. I know a team of 200 plus in the Bay. I know several agents that were friends before real estate even. Uh, hit me up. Let's get you in touch with one of them and start house hacking. Buy a house as soon as you can. As many rooms and lofts and open rooms that aren't really bedrooms, whatever, and rent out every room to the point where you're living for free or even cash flowing in your own house. It's like you're running your own little barracks, multifamily house hack. Wait, let it appreciate, and then sell it, and then or keep it, and then come here. Um, buy real estate and wait. Is I we just shot a video on that, and I talked about how I thought I was so smart. I lived in the Bay Area. Uh, got a degree, got a good job, all this stuff. And I came home and people are like, hey, like, ah, my uncle got me into construction and I bought one house at 22, paid them off. I learned how to pay it off faster. I, I get two more, two is paid off. I, I live in my house. I was like, so you, I'm like ringing them up, you know, oh shit. I'm like, so you're worth like 2.5 million. Like, yeah. I, and you one thing, you cash flow 5,000. I was like, oh, what it, why am I going to college? Just buy, buy real buy, estate and wait. Buy what you can qualify for. And if you house hack at that age, I wish I had house hacked. House hacked is the act of like getting people to live in there with you so they pay your rent for you. That's what I would do in my 20s. Levine, it's Levine. It's Levine. How do you think local Hawaiians treat mainlanders who come to work for a company, for example, a lineman for the electric company? Hmm. I think that blue collar like linemen like blue collar work like that anywhere is filled with banter and like your work ethic is really what cements your place in the pecking order and that's i don't think that's different here i think the way that we communicate and the values can be a little different so i think that um i don't think this question i answer it as like a lineman thing i think i just answer it as a general cultural thing so you might, for example, in the in the construction or lineman setting, it might be like, like, hey, you can grab those lines for me, bring them over. Whereas it may be like, hey, get me those effing lines in Boston or something, right? Or it, it might be like, you, so you, you might say like, hey, you want me to grab those lines for you? And then you might tell me, nah, no need. But I was like, nah, that's a need. Yeah. Like need the way she said them is like no I'll help her because I'm the apprentice or I'm the new guy no, no no need it's more of like it's not a test of like are you are you helpful it's more of just like a I don't want to be needy and say yes I need your help but I say like no need but I would love your help like this it's just it's it's more of the that way of speaking I learned in my sociology class in college is called like it's more encoded. It's not direct, like the Puritans that came to America. It's more encoded, and it's from like more of an Asian style of communicating. Um, so you might experience that as a lineman or as anyone else in any other setting. Uh, our culture is just slightly different. Good question about Y&I. By the way, Jody popped in. Did I, I think I pre-introed her, but this is Jody Tonga, Pacific Rim Mortgage. She's our business partner on the lending side. We do most of our business. Um, we are one of the most dominant teams especially on the buy side uh in hawaii and on this island and the majority of those get done with jody um and really life is just better and business is better and like yesterday you called me i i had already um met with my team and said hey if we wait till the 20th on this thing we could breach contract uh-huh yeah so we got to do it on the 19th right but i really appreciate it you called me I'm like make sure you do that before the 20th or we'd be out of contract yeah and like things i don't have to Nothing gets missed. All right, let's answer why and I. Where's why and I? I'm from I'm from why and I. I joined the Marines and I was planning on moving back in ten years, give or take. I know the market can change. I'm curious if there is scoop on future development on the West. Uh, West Side, for the most part, big development is done unless you talk Macaw Valley. So some people just purchased Macaw. They purchased all of Macaw Valley for what, like 20 million or 40 million? Is one of those fig did you see that? No. Yeah. So you know like Macaw Valley resort zone 
couple people have purchased it and said they're going to develop golf courses and a resort and everything. People just scored it. It was like 20 or 40 million. I, I can't. Which seems it, low. It could have been 20 million. Casey, Casey's been up. texting me. But it's a, it could be 40 million, but it was Sis, low. let's look it up. Even 40 million is low for it because it's like, it's acres and acres. But anyways, that there's talk of that. There's talk of like a Tiger Woods golf course and mm -hmm. a whole Ko'olina, Wailea, Princeville type resort area back in Waianae. But other than that, Development is pretty much on Sea Country was the last big development. Investors are still buying, you know, lots and, and larger pieces of land and CPRing them, like building four houses at yeah, a time, stuff like that. There's a lot of that. There's it's, that. Especially in YNI. And then flipping. People like to flip in YNI. You know why? You know why people like to flip in YNI? No, why? Be Come say We're hi. We're going to swap out then. Come say hi. You know, do you know, Mahe, why people like to flip in YNI versus flipping in like Kailua, for example? Because it doesn't rain there and construction and mining doesn't get messed up. That's what, yeah, so kind of. <laughs> come in, come in. So, yeah, so Mahe said because it doesn't rain in construction. You guys can both come in. So, one of the big reasons, yeah, it doesn't rain, construction timeline, and also the neighbor is not calling DPP the oh, same way. Like, yeah. These guys not pulling permits. That's why. Yeah. These guys building one whole house, not pulling permits. They just like the neighbors, like whatever. Just, you know, <laughs> yeah. they they cruising. You know, so okay, yeah. yeah, that's that why. Makes I, more sense then. Um, I'll be back. I'm gonna go. Okay, okay. Close out. You guys tagging and tagging out. Okay, we have a client uh, who just purchased or is closing in a few days. A few days, eight days. There are a few. There are a few days. rooms over over and uh, signing their final paperwork. Thank you. So funny you use the Boston reference. I'm from Massachusetts, considering making the move. It's living. Hey, so Boston and New Yorkers, like when I meet these people outside of their cities, they're super nice. And I think it's like there's elevated street awareness. Like they, uh, but in that setting, like I couldn't, in Boston, that, that would, I'd be, I'm too sensitive. I'd be like, bro, don't ever talk to me like that. You oh. know? Oh, you mean you get butt hurt? I get butt hurt. Yeah, yeah like yeah. oh, okay, local yeah. people in general. If you no, communicate like yeah. a New Yorker, I was just talking about this with uh, Ryan and Laura because they, oh, yeah, because he plays. Shout like, out to Ryan and yeah, Laura. Yeah, they they just close with us. Um, he oh, he plays hoops. basketball, right? And basketball on the mainland is full. Of Everybody chirps, talk. right? Yeah, Everybody yeah. like talks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, over here, you got to be careful because local brothers, they're not going to say a lot, but they're going to get real mad and then explode. And they're not even basketball players. Yeah, no, no. They're fighters playing basketball. Exactly. They're MMA for fighters cardio. trying to play basketball, getting, <laughs> for mad, cardio, yeah. getting mad that you're better at them at basketball. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah that's just kind of how we are. We're All sensitive. Right. What were some of the other questions from the previous? Uh... Oh, the screenshots. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, stack up your questions, guys. So I see psh, we're up to 50-something people. On an unannounced mm -hmm. live, we were like we were in the hundreds before. Um, if you have questions, cue us, up, cue us too, up. Cue so. us up. Okay. Wagwan family, can't wait to meet up with you. Wow, well, what's going on? Yeah. For NYC, what's up, Kev? Dun, dun, dun. Oh, Jeff Harlan just said, "Hey, Derek, we're planning on moving from Texas when our lease is up this year. Is it feasible to look for a three-bedroom on 500k?" Casey and I a were just bedroom. speaking about that for a single family or our a clients family? that came. You were just texting Casey, the ones that sent us the 700,000 YNI home. They wanted to run numbers. Yeah. So she said, is it feasible to get a single family more 500? You can. You can get a single family or like a duplex uh, in the 500,000 range on the west side. It's a lesser home than you're going to get for that in Texas yeah. where you're moving from. Yeah. You know, so... And sometimes when we're looking online and we do see houses in that price range, we got to consider things like uh, what's the condition of that actual property? Because if we're if we're not cash buyers, if we can't we don't have the capital to not worry about what it's going to appraise at or what the condition is or if the lender you know is going to approve it or not. If we're getting financing, we're looking at stuff sometimes in that price range. A lot of times they'll say, you know average which is sometimes a, a generous description of what the condition actually you always is. gotta if a real estate agent says excellent you always gotta take one off yeah whatever above it average, is just yeah. like tick it one box down so very rarely does someone use like the average to get people in and like oh this is nice yeah like, like that's average, not usually average like no so did you see the the listings that aiden like did the lock box and all that uh and why and i oh uh, yeah. uh so that one you I could, could get for five hundred thousand. It was nice. So the house was nice. It was cherry. This I flipper. I had a nice backyard. 
big backyard. It was okay. nice and big, different, but yeah, big backyard. <laughs> okay. Um, it was a nice home for five, like the 500 range, and today probably a little less. But the neighborhood, you know, I don't know where you're from in Texas. Like, I don't know what side of the tracks you're from. Like, the neighborhood wouldn't be for everyone, you know? Yeah. Um, Here's one from the last live before our thing died. Um, okay. Uh, I am 100% disabled vet. Do I pay property tax? So, basically, no. <laughs> uh, so, we're going to run the numbers with your lender, with the lender, um... I got some connects on that. Essentially, the answer is no. When we when we do our consult and when we start hunting our homes again, the escrow, uh, if you need more assurance on that, uh, I'm not a tax professional. I'm not a CPA, I'm not a tax attorney. Uh, I'm not even a state tax worker, right? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, 100% disabled vets. Hawaii is one of those states. You don't have to pay property tax is my understanding. Um, the reason why I say it like that too, not to be too much of a deflector and realtor, like um, I've heard of some nuances where like it depends because there's different types of 100% rate, you know, classifications. Also, there's instances where people go from 100 to 90, 90 to 100, the, you know, so the VA can change your rating, et cetera. Mm. But yeah, general answer, no. <clears throat> Have you guys talked, discussed about the public and private school systems on Oahu and Maui, also colleges and universities? Is there a correlation of house values to the school's location? Good question. We actually have a whole video that is goes over most of that. Um, in terms of the real estate, yeah. I mean, especially elementary schools, right? Mm -hmm. Like, for whatever reason, nationwide, when you buy in that, like, 10 out of 10 great schools rating elementary school area, uh I don't know if people just we care about our kids more when they're young, or <laughs> even on the mainland. I don't know how that works, but especially elementaries. Uh, I literally live where I live, kind of based on the elementary. My wife was an was is an elementary school teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, so short answer, yes. Have we talked about it? Yeah. Another thing, though, private schools in Hawaii, the majority of them, like eighty percent of them, are right there in town by Manoa. Yeah. Um, like. Uh, all of that, area, like all in the Kalihi, Manoa, like Punahou East, East Honolulu kind of area. Sorry, I'm like blocking the camera. Um, <laughs> 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 but yeah, they're more on that like town side. What we yeah, would, yeah. you'd have to like drive into town. I mean, there are some. There's some like IPAs on the on yeah, the IPA side, on the west know? side. Kailua has uh, mm -hmm. Le Jardin, mm -hmm. uh, Pietro Diamond, mm -hmm. but. Most of the private schools are in town, which means uh, commuting for the most part, unless you're at either a small church school or one of these few prominent private yeah. schools that are outside. Um, Public schools, sh just real quick, what we always say is in Hawaii, we take care of our young. My, my wife's auntie was a first elementary school teacher. Taught you and your brother, huh? Miss Vieira. I know she taught Thai. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's my wife's auntie, right? So... She and she moved to Denver and she taught there and and she's at a really good school district there and she's like you know Hawaii we do good no matter what with mm -hmm. our with our young, as things get older, just the culture like, <laughs> education isn't prioritized at a Hawaii public high school the same way it is at probably like Connecticut school yeah and so that's just a cultural thing and that's why like when we we have consults with our clients for that reason it's like. If your kids are real young and they're like elementary age, we're not like there's the less discerning, right? Because when you get older, I would send my, you know, yeah. I would send my kids to most elementary schools. Yeah. And I sometimes mean. I'm actually concerned my schools to what? This is too perfect. Like it's just too much homework. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Too, like too much homework. The like when I went to the parent teacher conference, my son, you know, miss. This, this okay. she's like, like, oh, Dane, you know, sometimes Dane get hard time listening, <laughs> and you know, sometimes I, can see that. I love, I love that. I mean, him. he's a five year old boy, yeah, what? you're kindergarten. Why are you so like, he to mostly do? listen, but sometimes get hard time. He's I'm like, like good, yeah, that's normal. Good. He's a five year old boy, yeah, yeah. So, anyways, ours was I, always, oh, Brooke gets to the destination, it just sometimes takes him a little bit longer, or he gets there in a different path, or does it a different way. I'm like, so he's creative. Like, yeah, yeah. It's like so. You're telling me he's gonna be an entrepreneur when he grows up. And but so you, I, I can't talk about ethnicities and race here on this channel. <laughs> but 
You know, you know, Milani school is all the last names from one country. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. And she was like, uh, "No, he needs to listen." Like, like she was like okay. real quick. <laughs> Sorry. And I, I had to bite my tongue. I was like, anyway. So anyway. <laughs> anyway. All right. What's next? Hi there, Kamahi. Love your channel. Moving from Atlanta to Oahu, what can I expect? Uh, less humidity. <laughs> uh, less humidity. Smaller. Atlanta is like a huge city. Um, less roller skating, although we did get a roller skating rink now. We did. Because Atlanta, you know, Atlanta's on that, you know. Um, southern food. I don't know. Southern comfort can be like aloha. So in some ways it can be endearing in the similar ways, but it's also very different. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And also like football games not being available. Yeah. Or like you got to wake up 5 a.m. to watch the games. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. All right. Hey, there, come on. I love your channel. Would housing on Oahu be comparable to the Seattle Tacoma area? Thank you. Uh, Seattle and Tacoma for like the mainland 48 or even is it the 49 is a more expensive area. We're more expensive than that though. Mm -hmm. I would say we're more on par with like we're in between like the Bay, Northern California, where it's the most expensive, and Southern California. Uh, so housing here. It's not as expensive as the Bay. It's more than Southern California. It's so we're we're more expensive, yeah. Um, what is the midterm rental market like in Oahu? Uh, oh wait, same as guy. I just moved here in June and I am loving it here. I would love to own a home, but the price of homes are so high. I make good money, but not rich. What are your thoughts on the market in a few years? Uh, I, you know what? This is a lot to unpack. We just shot a whole video, Siamese guy. Uh, I would yeah. love it. Okay. I mean, I Siamese like, guy has his handle. <laughs> okay, I'm like, what? Bro, I'm not making fun. Um, <laughs> so I would say text me, DM me, uh, fill out our contact form. We'll not only send you that video once it's edited, talking about this whole thing, uh, but also the main thing is I want to talk about the buying principles. Like, or if you're near IEA, come down right now. I'll show you <laughs> uh, if you're free. But uh, the principles of buying is there's just no greater opportunity than buying in Hawaii and waiting if you have the staying power. There you say you make good money. That can mean, you know, 300 grand to some people. It can mean 50 grand to some people. Mm -hmm. uh, Why are you here? How long are you here for? What it, there's what it, you know? there's so much. Here's the thing. <clears throat> trying to outsave the market is like, seeing a river with flowing water and trying to run next to it. All this inertia, you're trying to run. Uh, it's almost impossible. You can't outrun the water. You're going to get tired. Buying real estate is like jumping in that river in a kayak, using all of its inertia and paddling. So you're going faster than the river. Uh, maybe, and eventually like putting a motor on the boat, <laughs> you're going faster, faster. Like, That's a pretty good analogy. You, you build wealth through buying real estate, jumping in that river and using it. Uh, so don't fight it. Use it. Um, I hope there come out. Hey, I love you guys. Contract Long Beach. Wait, oh, give some guy. What's the midterm rental market like on Oahu? Just depends. Uh, are you talking about as an investor or mm -hmm. as a renter? Mm -hmm. Um, as an investor, it's kind of on the come up because of our laws with the strictest short term laws in the world, and you know, we have traveling nurses and mm -hmm. contractors coming to build things, etc. So, midterm can be decent. Um, if you are a renter. Yeah, they're 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 there for you. Question: I'm an electrician in New York here. From your experience with properties and builders, is it hard to find a good electrician in Oahu? I would like to be open. Actually, my brother-in-law manages one of the larger companies. Is it hard to find a good electrician? I wouldn't say it's hard to get on their schedule. It's no good. <laughs> good contractors are always in demand. And even in a down market for them, like less building, they're always full of work and side jobs. That's just, if your work ethic is good, you're a good communicator. And um, the thing is, is a lot of people know how to do these jobs, but they're not good communicators. They're mm -hmm. not hard workers, et cetera. It's, there's always a demand. So I'm actually trying, like, I would like for, I hope, I hope his boss don't see this. I'd like for my brother-in-law to go, like, let me invest with him and him open his own company yeah. because he would kill he would crush but there is like bureaucracy and like relationships and good old boy system here so coming from like new york opening your company you can you can do anything mm -hmm. um to break into the big contracts where you need like 50 guys etc that take that take some maneuvering 
Hello, Derek and Mahi. Love you guys. Content channel. Love you too, Martin. Mahalo. Uh, what's the next one? Uh, I was comparing to Orlando where there is a lot of new building going on. No, I was limited real estate. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Orlando I mean, is totally different. Mm-hmm. I have multiple Hawaii friends that live in Orlando. Just a different thing. Um, Joseph retracted his message. <laughs> Hi again. I've been going to Oahu almost every year for the past 15 years. I always hear locals saying Kapolei is going to be the new Waikiki. Not so the they new say Waikiki. that two ways. They say that because they're pissed off. Oh, yeah. That's, you, I guess so. When you that's think of like the is. intonation, oh, it's going to be the new Waikiki. Like, oh, oh, already when you go surf at Barbers, you're like, bro, Waikiki, Waikiki over here. If you go on a hot, like a Memorial Day to Barbers. That's not to say there's anything wrong with Waikiki. We absolutely love Waikiki. But like when you're here, yeah. it's like it's crowded, right? It's like the number one space for tourism and all the resorts are down there. So it's super crowded all and the time. Like traffic to especially like to try to go west side mm-hmm. from Kapolei at like 4 p.m. on a bad day mm-hmm. can be. Yeah, Kapolei is way more congested. The difference is you can only build up to three stories, especially except for a couple of hotels, a couple of buildings that go higher. But there's like a, a height limit on the buildings. Um, it's not Waikiki. It's, Wait, it's like we call it like Second City. Some people do because. But that's because they put City but, Hall and courts and libraries. But that just means like there's like all kinds of stuff that you would need there. It's not like it's still not Waikiki where it's like all the like cool dining. And I would like, say Aia is more Second City, right? Pro Ridge is here. Restaurants. Tall buildings. Nah. <laughs> you no, know, you don't see any any validity in that, Kench. It's more metro, but it's like too close to town for it to be like. Oh, it's like yeah, we're already right next to town. Like Kapolei is sec- they're saying second city because it's so far, and before you used to have to drive so far. But to my get point to is, is if you think it's like overran or whatever, like the traffic gets bad and all that, but like it's not like you're like, no. oh, I gotta make sure to go to Kapolei for the walkability and eats. Like it's not yeah. a metro area. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. You know what yeah. I mean? Double shockers from San Clemente. My wife and I will be stoked to be clients. We'll kickstart the process when appropriate. Hey, Joel. I want to say Joel or Joel. Joel. Go to Hapa J's, get the man fries, <laughs> and tell them uh, the guy from, well, I can't, I'm not supposed to reference my own company because they NDA, but <laughs> one of the Hawaiian guys who used to come through all the time uh, said, yeah, What's up? This head guy said, What's up? Oh, we have our, I have clients right now, Teresa and Sean from Kapolei as well. Is uh, he Paul? Hey, Derek. They left? Oh, I wanted them to come. And, you know. uh, if they want, tell them come. I'm on. sure Tim would love it. Tell them come then. Yeah. You go get them. You go get them. Go out that door. Yeah, go out that door. So we're, she's we're, faster than me. She's, she true. faster than me. True. Oh, I got to tell you a story about Jody. <laughs> so I said we we're going to play basketball court team against Pacific Graham. Uh-huh. And then she's like, we'd win. She's so competitive, uh-huh. right? And I was like, I don't know. Like, I can hoop, whatever. And I was like, you know, Mahi will body you. And she was like, <laughs> she was like, oh, I'm strong. Like, <laughs> I was like, uh, yeah, but Mahi's stronger. No, she's like, I was, I was like, oh. I don't know that I'm stronger. I am way bigger than her, though. Yeah. Like, so. <laughs> Jody is strong, though. You guys are strong women. Uh, just that crap thing. Hey, Derek and Mahi, love the videos. Watching from Japan. Hey, do you speak Japanese, Dan? <laughs> Uh, lived in Oahu from 2006 to plan on moving back in 2024. We own in Makakilo and love the place. Dan, I got a Japanese speaker right here. Let me know. What what do I say, Kenj? Okay, there's no way that that was right. There's no way that that... Tim, you going to come on? Come on, come on here. You and Mahe. I've been talking a lot. You and Mahe. Lower the mic a little bit. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Although with her heels, she's She saw, yeah. So, Tim, I met a guy. We met a guy at the gym, and he was like, I thought Derek was like 5'6". And then... Yeah, because Mahi like, wears heels all the right. time. Right, I know, because, yeah. I like to create the illusion of uh, dominance in all ways that I can when I'm next to Derek. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. guys, we want to introduce you. Yeah. Side, yeah, right? Beast. So this is Tim closing on Ho'opili and what? Yeah, so. A couple the, days? Three days? Yes, eight days. Yeah, that's right. 26. Come close to the mic. Sorry. Come, come, come. Yeah. 26, yep. Yeah, so. so very exciting. And thanks so much to you guys. Yeah, of I mean, course. You guys tell tell us a little bit work. about um, how the process is. A lot of people always ask us, what is it like for us if we're thinking about moving from the mainland? I know you guys are talking about you have your 
your stuff is arriving from the barge, you're, you're worried about it being there for too long. Well, how's the transition been for you guys so, so far? So, yeah, there's a lot of moving parts uh, <laughs> don't to be, this. Hey, don't be afraid to be negative because Tim had some, like, man, my stuff's getting there early. I'm yeah. going to have to have storage fees. Like, yeah. people yeah. want to yeah. know, like, what the hiccups yeah, are. Yeah, so, know? yeah, that was, I'm, uh, full disclosure, it was the most difficult piece for us, and mm. uh, it was the actual move itself. And you have to... You know, we, I did a lot of research on moving companies, mm -hmm. and uh, we went with some uh, a company that did it. Um, they didn't do it by um, volume. Uh, they they didn't do it by weight. They did it by volume, which okay. was which made um, it a lot more um, reasonable in terms of price, and mm -hmm. you don't have surprises at the end. So yeah, it's just whatever um, you can fit into exactly, that space. Exactly right. right. Yeah. Okay. The other thing was that the timing was they didn't do a good job on timing, so mm -hmm. that was tough, and. Um, so we had the vehicles show up too early, yeah. and then the the household goods are coming a little bit late. But all in all, we're you know we don't want to complain too much. We're <laughs> we're thrilled to be here, and uh, so um, yeah, this is this is kind of my bucket list move yeah. job. Yeah. Whole well, thing, we're so, so happy for I know. you. <laughs> I know it's been. Um, so they actually won in lottery. So you know, a uh, Ho'olulu bill, yes, exactly. which is the my favorite single family. In um, I know everybody loves Ikana. I love the Ho'olulu development because it looks like Hawaii to me. Like the homes have like a plantation feel. So today we did their uh, like their final walkthrough. It's a, the when you go in and you hit anything that you see, you know, so that the developer can make sure that they fix whatever might need to be, you know, retouched or refinished before closing. Um, so tell me about kind of like your I know your wife was super excited. So what was oh, yeah. your guys like initial reaction to seeing it built and in person for the first time? It, it definitely uh, made it real. Like yeah. we've been living out of here's another thing that was has been difficult. We've been li living out of suitcases since November 18th. Mm -hmm. Not fun. And mm -hmm. we're still there. And so seeing the house um, just really lifted her spirits. And we're, you know, just thrilled that we're going to be in it soon. And mm -hmm. the, the home itself um, is there's another big difference in the mainland. It's smaller, right? Yeah. It's more expensive, less square footage. But mm -hmm. the build itself was great. Mm -hmm. It's it's really nice. Um and the kitchen was, uh, we really liked the the appliances, yeah. the cabinetry in the kitchen, mm -hmm. and uh, some of the upgraded features were not used to smart, uh, the smart home oh, system. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Uh -huh. So, yeah, we're, uh, we're, we're really pleased. And the community itself seems really quiet. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be great for us, you know, doing walks and yeah. just ec extracurricular activities mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah, they so, got the, the Soho, Soho Community right? Center. And yeah. then... Kenji, will you pay attention to that just in case anybody has like questions about the new build and buying process or it's questions for Tim about moving over? Feel free to ask those too. Okay, yeah. yeah. So if you guys have any questions, uh, for you know, sure. this is yeah. like, you know, we're he's here now. He's just about to close soon. Um, now is a good opportunity to just kind of and we like. Pull, we dragged him in here pretty much. He was done. He was trying to leave. That's and true. I was I was halfway to the parking garage. <laughs> would, would you tell your story about the elevator? And oh, yeah, yeah. So I, I don't mind. I don't mind telling oh, it. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we're mainlanders and we're not used to a lot of the customs mm -hmm. here. Like the shoe, we Mahi and I oh, were talking yeah. about the shoes, thing, oh, taking yeah. the shoes off at the door uh -huh. and all that. Anyway, uh, we've been staying at the Ala Moana and uh, in town. And so we've been going in and out, obviously, on a regular basis. And we get to the elevator and usually, you know, you just pile into the elevator area and press the button you'll wait for one to go up yeah well we got there and there was a line and like mm -hmm. i'm not paying attention i'm like talking to my wife and i got things going through my head so i just walk over to the elevator bank hit the you know make sure the bus button's pressed and someone grabs me right away and they're like are you skipping are you skipping ahead in line and i'm like what do you mean line? like for the elevator yeah like <laughs> exactly i was like who doesn't a yeah. line for the elevator mm -hmm. and and then so she looks back at what appeared to be maybe her mom like uh, howlies I'm oh like, my oh. god <laughs> i'm like that hurt that hurt my feelings oh my god. it wasn't intentional yeah. so i felt bad so that's the other thing too of like people coming from mainland that like culturally it's different here so there's it just is. small things like he, he, tell us about how you came for your friend and you went to your friend's place right and then oh yeah yeah, yeah. so um when we were here visiting um uh, our employer did a nice dinner at night and it was at his home and so we went and as we came up the stairs and got ready to enter the home we were just walking right in and someone just like grabbed my shirt and they're like whoa and I'm like what what's going on take off your shoes and I'm like yeah 
And I was like, I don't, I thought it was a, I thought it was like his personal yeah. thing, uh -huh. but no, I, it's like a cultural yeah. thing here. So. so when he had come before, he thought maybe I was like, oh, this guy is like anal retentive about yeah, exactly. stuff. Exactly. And then when I went to their walkthrough today, like me and the DR Horton representative, we both took our shoes off. That's right. He's like, oh, I'm like, yeah, it's a, you know, it's a, like, all Asians do that. Like yeah. we always take our shoes yeah. off before we go. And, and I like yeah. it. I, you know, yeah. we've, we've got carpeting in some of the rooms. We yeah. opted for carpeting in some of the rooms. So I'm going to start doing it. Just, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. So here's a, here's a progression of that. And Mahio probably agrees. If you, when you start out, you're from the Northeast where everything's just direct and you, yeah. when you're in the Northeast, you appreciate them being direct. It's actually yeah. standard strike. Thank you for being direct with me. Yeah. So I wasn't guessing. Yeah. So there's a shift that'll happen here. When you get here, it almost seems passive aggressive and really uptight. And then after you start to understand it, it becomes like, oh, they're actually being very polite and going out of their way to be very polite. Not not calling you howdy, right? Right. right. Yeah, but like that. these things, like standing in line, like hey, oh, you're cutting, like that. Yeah. yeah. Right. It, it's just different. Like we're halfway to the east geographically. We're halfway to the east culturally. Or right. we're like half half eastern. Maybe not halfway there, but like we're like. We have those influences, so yeah, mm -hmm. Hawaii is just different. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is. So there's definitely some positive things, though, uh, yeah. Uh, that I, yeah, I like it, and it'll take some time to get used to the uh, routine, but yeah. Yeah, thank you. Hey, thank again, you I can't, I can't thank these guys enough. They've been fantastic, and this is how we kind of found you guys. You yeah. know, you guys are like you two stars now. <laughs> so, and uh, they've helped us through every step of the process and stayed on top of things for us, and. Uh, yeah, it's been a good experience. So, kudos Thanks, to you Tim. guys. Hey, yeah. Six, six more days. Eight more days. Eight more days. That's right. Eight more yep. days. Yeah. <laughs> Eight days to cheese. Right. So I will let you back in yeah. here, Derek. All right. Thanks, Thanks a lot, man. Thank you. All right. Ah. I'll, I'll see you at the back door. I'll probably see you on key. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I'll probably see you on key day. Tell Marissa we said sorry. Okay. okay. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, what other questions we have? Yep. Hmm. Oh, how's you? Just signing, just jumping to live. You're just all over the place, huh? We started off here with jet set kev right here. From there down here. Started here you go. Okay. You go. How's this water bottle? Hey, comment. How you guys like Watching my water from bottle? Japan. Plan on making a moment 2024. Own a Makakilo and love the place. Okay, awesome. Dan Schaefer. I feel like. So we have a Japanese have speaker behind Dan the scenes. Schaefer? Why does that name sound so familiar? Have you already connected? I think if, so, you know. I you, think. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Aiden, does Oahu have good poultry markets to buy fresh chicken, goat, and duck? No. Well, Chinatown, like duck. What? Come on. This is, he's asking, like, we're not talking like one duck hanging from the, the window <laughs> in Chinatown. We're talking like a good Chinatown, place to buy. Chinatown, you can like, get duck. And 99 Ranch, you can get poultry. duck. Poultry. Can you? Goat, though? He, Chicken, goat. I don't know. You, you guys, can hunt like, like goat on Kauai, especially. You can go Molokai. Yeah, my neighbors on Molokai burning the hair off goats all the time. Like yeah, They burn the hair off? Yeah, they do. And I'd be like, ugh, because it stinks. I bet. Yeah. You so, can, you know, so we have a lot of like mountain goats on different islands, not on Oahu. Uh, duck, you can get places. Chicken, like what we know. We just went to Kauai two days ago, right? Mm -hmm. And and like not went me. gas station. Yeah, you didn't go. Um Gas station, they're like Kauai grass fed, pasture raised beef yeah. jerky, like in the gas station. Like these outer islands, a little bit they more. They got more land, that's why they can have more like, land. I think people that move there have a sense of self sufficiency. I was just going to say they got more of a sustainability, vibe, yeah. like, you know, mindset than we do here. Yeah. We, yeah. And that's a shame because, like, it in sucks, a lot of yeah. cities, those are the places like preaching, like, they're kind of food snobs. Like, but mm -hmm. in our city, city, we're not big on it. Mm -hmm. So high, high quality meats, you can get them. We have Whole Foods. Uh, so you, you can, I went there the other day, actually. Um, yeah, we have Whole Foods. Oh, my goodness. Here we go. Which loan type is better, conventional or VA, for someone who wants to put down 20% or close to it and waiting on a DAV rating? Also, how do VA assumable loans work and how often are those available? This is a multi-layered question. Assumable loans we are in the middle of one four months in right now mm -hmm. uh be great if you could so here's the thing they bought it for 500 it's worth 600 they're selling it mm -hmm. they only owe 400 <clears throat> which yeah. is 450 whatever you can assume what they owe you have to come up with cash for the delta yeah now if you were going to put 20 percent down anyway and you have the capital to do that that's a great situation yeah ours is looking like it's going to take six months 
well, Lauren and I are working up the numbers today and going to mm-hmm. talk to the client. Like, should we just go back to the market? Yeah. Because who knows right. if this thing's ever going to close. And then additionally, you have to consider the fact that the Delta grows the longer it takes to close. Yeah. So each month they're paying down their mortgage. So it's a little. So if you were right, mm-hmm. I got 50 grand. Like it's going to go up and up and up. So mm-hmm. Sumo loans are a pain. Um, but that's fine. We do that for you. If it can work for the seller, if it can work for the buyer, if they're open to long timelines, et cetera, it could be it could be a great thing. Yeah. Um, which is better, VA or conventional? Well, we just shot a video, so we redo that video, Jody and I. It's gonna be fun. Okay. I think it's gonna be a, a standalone video. Okay. So we just shot a video talking about the VA loan versus the uh, uh, conventional loan. Which one's better? Depends on your train of thought. But if things were to work out Mm -hmm. the way most real estate agents say, oh, you just buy and things are always going to go up in Hawaii and Mm -hmm. 4% appreciation every year. And Mm -hmm. if things work out that way, the VA loan is far superior. Mm -hmm. And investing, they have a, you know, you hear ROI, return on investment. Well, more specifically, cash on cash. So if I put $100,000, $100 into something, how quickly do I get that money back? If you ever watch Shark Tank, uh, comment in the comment section if you ever watch Shark Tank. Mr. Wonderful, Kevin O'Leary, he always structures his deals like this. I give you the 100000 I'm going to want $5 back for every teddy bear that you sell until I get my hundred grand back. And then I want 5% in a perpetuity or whatever. Super smart. He rarely gets accepted be- because his deal is kind of selfish. <laughs> but... Uh, he always structures it like that, almost always, because he's making sure he gets his cash back. So it's called cash on cash return. What is the rate at which I get my cash back? So if you put a hundred grand into something, and then you get uh, twenty five thousand back per year, you get twenty five percent cash on cash return. If you put zero, here's the thing. Here's the big point. If you put zero dollars into something, it appreciates and you make any amount of money, that's an infinite return. So a lot, we, they ask these questions like, what is that return? People would be like, oh, it's a 100% return. It's, a, it's actually infinite. You put $0 into something and then get your money back. Let's say you put $0 into something, the market goes down, and then you have to leave. Well, you're going to take a loss for a few months, but eventually in Hawaii, barring... Uh, uh, unprecedented circumstances, Hawaii real estate is going to go up. So then you get your return later. You had to pay some money during the winter season of of the economy, but then you get a return. It's still way less than you ever would have paid uh, in the conventional situation. So if you know how to use leverage, you know how to be responsible, you have us as your advisors. Typically, I'm going to go VA loan, zero down, keep that cash. But if you're going to take that cash and buy candy bars, and trips to Aruba, then maybe mm-hmm. just go ahead and lock it into that house. That's a safer place for it to live. We hit everything there? Yeah, I'm scrolling up because did you guys hit the... I was going to get to that Olu. one too. What up, did you answer Makaha. the one? Where do U of H faculty... We did. Okay. I know she asked last week too. When, oh, when sorry. We bombed. Yeah. <laughs> when we bombed. <laughs> when we had technical difficulties. <laughs> um, what do we think of the cottages at Mauna Olu? Have we visited... Uh, I would love to live in Makaha Valley. I think it's one of the best views on Oahu and is more reasonably priced being on West. Uh, I think they're amazing. They're beautiful. I think, I think they're beautiful. Yeah. As, uh, you just got to be a specific person who is about that remoteness. That, yeah, it's like, it's remote. Mm-hmm. You That is not really a word that comes to mind when I think Makaha because you're constantly driving next to things to get there. Mm-hmm. But you're at the end of the road. Yeah. It's a and commitment to live out there. It's a commitment, yeah. It's far, you know. So, so. as long as that's conducive, I think. And I it's like as far as you can go, like that way. You can't go further. You can't go further than like you, unless you get dirt bike, then you can go further. <laughs> you know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? So yeah, not. It's a yeah. it's a commitment to live out there, but they're beautiful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Love the channel. I'm a all police right, officer here next. in California debating. Um, thank you. Thank you. First for of your- all. For your public service. Debating retiring on Oahu since pensions not taxed. My cue, it, my question is, I would would I be accepted as an officer on Oahu if I wanted to keep working at least? So you would still have to, your chances are probably better if you're, so my ex-husband was a. I was going to say, you know, you're married to a police my officer. My ex-husband was a, in law enforcement. Um, and even 
even like interdepartment, like in Hawaii, like MPD, Maui, Maui versus like Oahu, you cannot transfer within the departments. However, if you have passed like LEO uh, background, it's a lot, I feel like a lot easier to get into yeah. um, the department, but you would still, I'm pretty sure you'd have to run through the academy like all the Here, way. Here's another thing. My good friend is a, a well-known lieutenant. Um, my business partners work out with him. Yeah, Big Dave, yeah. And uh, I'm going to start... Uh, I'm going to start going to work out with them yeah. on some days. But anyways, I'll put you in contact with him. I'm sure he'd be happy to answer some questions. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if you're serious and you, you know, you're serious yeah. about the potential move and you want to chat with them, fill out the contact form on the website, hit us up and I will put you in direct contact with him. Yeah. And I had, I just did a consult too. I'm trying to remember his name. So sorry. I for, I'm forgetting it right now, but same, pretty much same position, not retiring, but looking to move um, just to, you know, I don't know what county you're in in California, but like Hawaii is different. We don't have a lot of violent crime here. So um, sometimes if you're not like California, yeah, not like can have in other places. If you're a police officer or you work at the level one trauma center, <clears throat> it changes your view of, of Oahu. Yeah. So to us, but we might be like, oh, my God, that's crazy. Honolulu is crazy. Had you know, a but shooting this year. Yeah. Like there what you or know, two like shootings or, you know, something. Oh, it's going it's going off. It's really just fireworks. You know, it's fireworks and domestics yeah, yeah, yeah. is like what we are dealing with here all the time. So. Um, what else yeah. we got? I don't see anything else. Are those all the questions, Kench? Uh, right now we're up to date, yeah. We okay. are up to date. Um, okay. Well, if we're up to date. We're probably going to... Oh, <laughs> the water. Start to wrap this up. From our last live that we had technical difficulties on, mm -hmm. we were buying in 2023, talking about the market, um, timeline of events. So if you have questions about, hey, how do things go? When should I connect with you? The answer is usually now. Um, mm -hmm. If you're comfortable coming to these lives, just observing the channel and then you want to reach out to us, you know, in two years and that's that's totally fine. Uh, but for the people that are within a year, 100 percent reach out to us now. Like you, you, you should not wait because things happen. Maybe we need to get your credit tightened up. Maybe we need to have our cold callers cold calling for a future opportunity for you next year. You know, whatever the case may be, definitely within a year. Mm -hmm. Um but, but reach out to us anytime. One more question. Uh, top five employers on Oahu other than mil military. So resort, <laughs> hospitality is... You're talking industry. So there's something called a CAFR, a Comprehensive Annual Financial Report. Every uh, mun municipality, city, district, anyways, government entities have to produce these things. It's kind of like how if you go uh, public on the stock market, you have to show your financials and your earnings. The comprehensive annual financial report shows that for cities, you can look at who the top employers are. So I remember when I was thinking of investing in Nashville, it was good because like a place like Seattle, top employers, Microsoft, and it's like 8%. So if they were to leave, right. Nashville is like 3% was Vanderbilt and then 2% was the government, the local government and everything else. So a bunch of, you know, diversified big employers. For us, military for sure. And then I think Pearl Harbor, like Pearl Harbor Hickam is like the biggest single entity employer. So mm -hmm. oh, civilian Everybody for military. Knows at least like 10 people who work at oh, Pearl Harbor. Cousin yeah. work shipyard. Yeah. Well, we went welder. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The <laughs> insulation, you know, <laughs> guarantee. So and then um, resort as an industry, the resort industry is is by far the biggest. Uh, after that, probably healthcare. Healthcare, education. Resort and tourism, biggest healthcare, yeah. education, yeah. Mm -hmm. I have to look up the CAFR. Uh, we showed the new website selling in 2023 on this channel. So, local Hawaii people, if you, you made it this far. Uh, we want to, we are going to start uh, promoting more of our listings. So, we do sell homes. <laughs> uh, we, this channel tends to lend itself towards buyers, but imagine, uh, we are the only team that can get you these hundreds of thousands of views uh, in, additional, in addition to the MLS and Zillow and all the things that anyone else can do. Mm -hmm. We have a unique asset. <laughs> Not only that, but uh, we are committed, skilled, obsessed with this craft. And I take it personal. I take, you know, I'm a numbers guy. I'm, a, I'm an investment guy. The home I live in, it's... I'm not necessarily etching my kid's height into the baseboard or whatever because <laughs> I plan to move on and refi mm -hmm. it and use it as investment. I look at everything that way. So I look at your home that way as well. Um, one more. Um, you want to? Yeah, go. You yeah. go. Uh, what banks do you recommend looking at for home loans? So 
go to so hit us up. We're gonna connect you with our lender, Pacific Rim Mortgage. Uh, we can usually automate, like have my assistant do that right away. If you fill out the contact form right now, within the hour mm -hmm. or less, you mm -hmm. get contacted. You can get connected, especially if you put on the form. I want to get connected to your lender. Mm -hmm. um, the thing is, I get it. People think banks for lending. Yeah, but banks. Especially mainland banks, it's I've never had a good experience with a mainland lender or a mainland bank. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've had bad ones. <laughs> and then for a local lending, uh, only in unique situations have I. We've gone directly to banks for Very a certain unique. reason, like it a physician's loan. A physician's loan, or I've What's had like. Think of um, another one? If I you, had where the builder had a special rate going just with that bank, just for specific units in the build. So it's like that, very, yeah, yeah. there are very like niche areas where it just worked out better. But yeah, I answer is I typically wouldn't go banks, but hit us up. And here's the other thing. If, if our primary lender, the reason, so one of the heavy, heavy hitters on this island, we, we got together and they said, Hey, if you send me someone, I'll always close them. I'll always close them. Like if I show them, they always close. And I was like, well, there's situations where maybe someone shouldn't buy. And like, yeah. I, my business ethics and yours like don't seem to align. So I won't work with people that aren't doing the right thing. Also, I started to build a relationship with um, one of the veteran lender, like their companies mm -hmm. branded around veterans. Mm -hmm. The rates just were not there, and they, it just it wasn't the thing. Yeah, uh, Jody fixed it, and. I, you know, I told him like, look, we'll lock in and be business partners, but I need the best to great rates. Mm -hmm. Like I, I get it. Your guys' service. I get it. Their service is superior to almost anyone. Maybe mm -hmm. probably the best. I get your, like all that's great, but I'm also a numbers guy. Like we, we got to have amazing rates all the time. And so if some, if some point is, if it's not in your best interest to use our lender, then we shift, we yeah. move. Like, but also like a lot of times if you, if you are attracted to our team and you like how we run our business, chances are you're going to get along well with their team as well because she's very much so the same. And she's like, to the point, you know. Do the right thing. Yeah. To the point. No BS. No BS. Client first. You know, like, not necessarily in here in like a ball gown and tuxedo <laughs> type thing, uh, but getting getting stuff done at a yeah. high level, yeah. you know, and, and with good service. So, yeah. And I want to address something really quick because a lot of people are like, Oh, they have a lot of questions that they don't realize are lender questions or financial questions. Um, connecting with a lender doesn't mean that you um, have to get a hard credit pool right now. It doesn't mean that you have to get pre fully pre-approved and you have to be ready to buy a house right now. That's not what this sort of um, connection or um, yeah. consult or conversation would be with them. It's it's a educational, it's data collection, um, which is important, even if you're in the, I don't know if I even can or want to buy stage. So You know, most people out there in the comment section, leave <laughs> a comment and or raise your hand in the privacy of your own house if you <laughs> want to be better at money. Everyone. Uh, raise your hand if you probably grew up, think like it's rude to talk and weird to talk about money. So if you want to get good at anything, should you talk about it? and study it more or less more yeah. so if you get a free basically a free financial yeah. coaching session yeah. mm -hmm. out of this and it's you know quick 10 15 20 30 minutes on the session why not like i'll take that every month if i can mm -hmm. you know like mm -hmm. as much as my schedule allows i'll take that so if you don't have to do a hard credit pool and someone's not going to be you know trying to make you buy tomorrow even though you're not ready like you, you might as well I, it, yeah. it doesn't make sense to not to not do it did i say that you got it to not to if you doesn't can make you sense must to not to <laughs> if you can you must um okay. i want to know you know i got through all of my my points from the last live uh leave some comments whether it's after the live is aired or now what special guest what kind or mm -hmm. what specific special guest and collaborators would you want to see on this channel we have a local, like, grassroots-level politician who wants to come on, and I just, I'm a fan of her. I don't know if she's identifies as left or right or whatever, but I just know she's she's cool. She's local, and I, I like I like her. So we're probably going to bring her on. Um, and what video topics do you guys want? Yeah. These questions are great because you guys are implying the video topics here, and we get we get to interact live, and that's amazing. 
But uh, if you're like, hey, uh, I'm thinking about buying Kahala. Mm -hmm. You know, we just had someone come into our world recently uh, who's buying in a, a very, very much a luxury market. Mm -hmm. Really, there is no price limit. And uh, we haven't done a ton of those videos, so we might make an effort to do some more. Um, let us know what you guys want to see from this channel and who, who else you guys want to see on it. Yeah. Any more comments? Any more departing comments? I think we're caught up. Right on. Thank you guys so much. Yeah. Comment. Go in the description. Subscribe. Please subscribe. If you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, you can even do the notification bell to, so you know when we, our videos launch. But definitely subscribe. Mm -hmm. uh, our Facebook group. All Facebook groups. Our Facebook groups in the description. Our website's in the description. Remember, yeah. in about five days, it's probably going to be next Tuesday. Ooh. I showed them our website. Okay. It's looking oh, fire. We did? Yeah. It's okay. looking fire. Our website's going to be fire. It's launching Tuesday. But both of them have a contact form at the top and mm -hmm. at the very bottom of the homepage. Um, Please reach out to us. We always get comments from people who are like, mm, we just were worried that you guys were, you know, too busy or whatever. We're not. Like, that's the whole Well, point. here's the thing. If you're like, hey, we're buying in, you know, a year and then. Mahi schedule's full and she's doing consults that day and there's someone who's like hey I just got here and I want to write an offer mm -hmm. uh, you know <clears throat> graciously and respectfully let us prioritize that you know so if we schedule your consult for a week or two from now because you're so far out uh, then I think that's fair right mm -hmm. it, and we sort of have to triage things but yeah hit, hit us up reach out to us good Thanks, oh yeah Melissa. So we, our goal is going to be, well, we have some, we have some, we might go live every day. What? Yeah. We're talking about going live. Why am I never included in these conversations? We're like, talking about going live like, in the field, like shooting our on scene stuff oh. live, everything live. So, oh, yeah. um, just don't even yeah, talk to me about well, you should have came to Kauai. I wanted to, um, I said, I got one day, this is it. And you're like, okay, we're going that other day then. <laughs> like, okay, we timed cool. it so Mahi could. <laughs> no, but we're planning to go live uh, at least once a week, probably multiple times a week, and um, and maybe even out in the field live, like drive along with Derek and Mahi kind of that stuff. That would be fun. Showings of houses with yeah. Derek and Mahi kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah, hit us up. Hit us up with any suggestions, comments, love. All of the energy you give us helps boost the channel. Yep. A ton of work, money, effort, equipment, time, all that goes into this channel. So uh, so gas us up. We appreciate you guys. Thank you, guys.